Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to do another video on Makulu Linux Shift. Yeah, that's kind of weird, isn't it? I just did one in my last video. So what gives? Well, this is a follow-up because in the last video, I think the Makulu team kind of got the shaft a little bit because it happened that GNOME had updated to 41 right in the middle, practically, literally, <laughs> in the middle of my review. And when I did that update, of course, everything broke. At the same time, Mukulu team was also right in the process of releasing the Ubuntu spin. And Ubuntu is a little bit more bulletproof when it comes to GNOME's updates because they hold them back a bit. And so the timing was really just kind of just so I didn't really quite do the Makulu spin justice, even though I kind of really assign it more to GNOME than anything. <laughs> uh, because you know how GNOME is with their uh, incompatibilities with extensions and so forth. Always kind of a, a bother. Shortly after I released my video, Jacques from the Makulu team had messaged me and let me know that there is a new shift available. And so this Ubuntu spin came out just a couple days ago from the time of this video, which was October 27th. So that's a truly is irresistible thing. I just had to go in there and give it a look. And I gave it a look and wow, this is really great. Oh, and by the way, the Debian spin that I did the review on last week, that's been taken care of too. The fixes are in place. And so after the update, everything is just fine there too. So both spins are working perfectly now. So that was really a minor thing as well. And you know, the Makulu team, they're on top of it. So I'm going to give this one another look. I went ahead and downloaded the Ubuntu download and there's a lot of new improvements in the new spin. I can't wait to check it out. I've gone ahead and downloaded it and I won't bore you with the install. So I'll just get right to it and jump into the Ubuntu desktop. So here we're booting in and wow, a really nice splash screen right off the bat. I like that. That's something new. Uh, it wasn't quite that fancy before. So really cool. I like things like that. <laughs> Any extra bling is always good. Okay, so here I am at the login screen and the login screen even looks different right off the bat. Uh, we got the virtual keyboard down there showing up. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Okay, and here we are, we're in our desktop and so far so good. So here we got our setup manager. This is always handy when you need to, to set up some extra things right at the beginning. However, for me, it's always been something I can skip over because all my drivers and everything have gotten installed just fine. So by selecting next, it'll go through each one of these here and help you select this stuff. And they really simplify it through these steps here. So anything you might need, you can get to quite easily. And then of course, it's readily accessible afterwards too through our desktop manager. And when we launch our desktop manager, here we got what you saw in the last one, except now it's all integrated. So it's really nice. It makes it a lot easier to work with and maneuver. For example, I can go in here, but if I want to go, let's say to the theme manager, I can click on that and then it brings up the manager and the other window just kind of transforms or disappears. So here I can go ahead and change anything like my cursor or my colors and so forth. And when I'm done, all I got to do is just X out and we go right back to the window. I really like that. That's nice. That's a nice little touch. And so that happens with all of these. So if I was going to go into the desktop clock and make some kind of changes, same thing. And also your weather settings, click it out and then back to the window. Really cool. And so now our default desktop here is the simple desktop here. I would probably keep this one as my go-to desktop. <laughs> and also they did kind of stress on the website that this is the beta version. Although it can be used as a daily driver because it's pretty stable. It's based on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So the LTS, if I remember right, is good up until like 2025. So LTS has long-term support there. Let's just kind of double check and see how our other things are. Uh, Flash, that was one of my desktops I thought was pretty cool. It had a lot of cool wallpapers in it. And Lindos, 
then we had our plasma and so forth. So we kind of all went through all these in the previous video. However, just kind of going through and it looks like the transition went perfect. Just like before. In the other video where we kind of went south is after we ran the updates. <laughs> However, like I said now, Jacques has let me know from the team there that all that was taken care of even in the original version. Now, being that this is based on the Ubuntu 20.04, stability ought to be really a major factor here. Whereas the other version is based on Debian testing. And so in Debian testing, you're going to have the 5.14 kernel. In the Ubuntu, I think it's probably right around 5.11, I believe. And let's just open the terminal real quick and kind of do a NeoFetch. And yes, we're running 5.11, GNOME Desktop, and all that other good stuff. And our memory usage right now is showing like at 9.54. Let's run HTOP. I'm assuming that might be installed. And it is. Nice. Right now, about 9.88 to a gig. And we have things open here like the software manager running. So that's not bad at all, especially when you have a GNOME background there. Because on a regular GNOME desktop, uh, you're going to get somewhere around 1.2, and that's idling with nothing running. And with this Software Center updating and running, that's pretty good. So the Software Center is already updated now. And I hit Spotify by mistake. Okay, so we got our update. And so that took about a minute or so to update. That's because it's the first time it's, it's run. And so on a first run, it's going to take a while for all the icons and everything to download from the repositories and so forth. So now that everything's all synced up, the next time we open this up, it'll work much quicker. It'll load right in and all the icons will just be right there. So we got past the first time and it looks like our software is up to date already. So we don't even need to do updates. That's great. <laughs> So with the updates in place and everything's working, that's fantastic. Glad to see that. And also on future updates, this should not break because like I was saying, we got the stability of Ubuntu here. So there's not going to be any GNOME updates popping in ahead of the fixes on the extensions. And I see that as a big plus. That would kind of make me as a user probably want to favor the Ubuntu spin for those reasons. However, I kept the other one on my machine and it was back in shape before long. And like I said, when the extensions broke, you just pretty much went back to the regular GNOME. So if you're fine with running regular GNOME, then it's not really a big deal. You just kind of run regular GNOME for a while until the extensions catch up. However, with the Ubuntu, you don't have to worry about it. So since our software is up to date, by the way, this is all compatible with Snap and the Snap Store and FlatHub. We got all that plus the Ubuntu repositories. It's pretty up to date too, I think. This is looking for new updates. I must have clicked that update button. I did. So I'm jumping back here to explore again. And there we got the Brave browser. I forgot what this has. It's got Chrome by default. So I think I might just install Brave in here. And this is a really nice look. I like the Ubuntu software center here. Always pretty nice. Got a lot of nice recommended picks and featured items. And then down here you got your categories all laid out really nice. So you can browse by category. And of course you can hit the search button up here and look for something specific. Even recommended games down here like Zero AD. You know, I should, I should make my own clone of this. Copy it, reskin it, and call it Zero BC. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes me wonder if back in Zero AD, if they ever argued about that. And when was the point it went from Zero BC to Zero AD? Or it was 1 BC and then became 0 BC for a second and then 0 AD? Or did they argue about it? It's 0 AD. It's 0 BC until 1. Then it'll be AD. And others said, no, it's AD right now. 0. Hmm. Yeah, I probably gave them something to talk about back then since they didn't have any video games or computers or anything. So anyways, clicking on Brave here. And just kind of want to take a look. So it looks like they have 
under the sources, they have the Mukulu Linux shift as one. And so I'm assuming that's either their own repository or it's like an Ubuntu repository or a little bit of both. So we got our Mukulu shift and then Snap Store, our, our other options, and they all look like they're the latest version. I'm gonna just leave it with the Mukulu shift and get it directly from their repository. And we'll just go ahead and let that run and install. And that's really fast. Wow. That came right in pretty quick. So now we got it completely installed and we got our launch, remove, permissions, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna close that. And then I'm gonna close this dashboard here real quick and close the terminal so we can see up here our conky. And so the conky is something I really kind of like on this too, because it kind of gives us our stats up here, our high drive status and our RAM usage. So right now it's still at 1.2 gigs, running the 5.11 kernel. And we got our uptime and then our base system, which is the Bakulu Linux. And then it even has news headlines up here, which you can access through the desktop manager. And then our interesting quotes daily. I kind of like those. I've kind of gotten spoiled with those quotes every time I jump in to a spin of Makulu, I gotta read those quotes. <laughs> and here it says, reach high for the stars lie hidden in your soul. Dream deep for every dream precedes the goal. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> so let's open up the desktop manager again real quick. And just like in our previous ones, these all switch over pretty fast. And I think I'm gonna just jump back to the simple here since that was our default desktop to begin with. But everything seems to transition over just beautifully. And I think the idea of having a transformational spin of Linux is really cool. You can transform one of eight desktops anytime you want. So it's kind of like distro hopping without having a distro hop, if that makes sense. <laughs> I like that. I can have the, the core look, the dash look, the plasma look, the gnome style look. And then we have the Unity, our kind of traditional Ubuntu look. So you got all these different looks and tons of wallpaper. I think they said there were like 94 or 96 wallpapers available. And so if you hit the wallpaper manager, again, it comes up in a nice neat little window and you can select which brings up variety. And then you got all the different wallpapers up here. I like the one with the fox there, that's pretty cool. Beautiful wallpapers, uh, really nice colors. I've always been a fan of colors. And then of course, once you got the wallpaper you like, well, that's not a bad one either, actually. And so is that. I just might keep that, that was a happy accident. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quit out of there. And I think I'm gonna change my pointer. Not real crazy about the default pointer. Kind of big and feels clunky. So again, that's done in the theme manager. Just jump in here and I think I'll just go with the white one there. But you do get a lot of variety of pointers. And the other thing I wanna point out is that you can customize your themes and make your own themes. And don't forget the constructor tool. Once you create your own desktop layout, for example, if you got the layout exactly the way you want it, and maybe you got certain icons that you want up here on the desktop specific to your install or installs that you want to have maybe on other machines. You can set it up first on one machine, have the icons you want available on the desktop, have the layout the way you want it. And once you get the layout looking exactly the way you want it, if you want that uniform look across an organization or a household, all you got to do is go in the constructor tool and create an ISO and then you'll have a bootable ISO that you can go and install anywhere and it'll put the copy of your previous machine anywhere you want it without your personal information. So it doesn't carry over your profile and all your personal documents. It just creates a bootable ISO set up the way you set it up. I think that's really awesome. That's one of the coolest, probably next to the transformational aspect of it, that is one of the other coolest aspects of this OS. <laughs> and of course in here we got all our stuff, I think is the same things that we had in the other spin. 
But again, we have the Ubuntu base in there, the dot twenty o four in our system monitor. So you can never have too much monitors. <laughs> and here's our processes. So if you ever need to go in here and just kind of kill something, you can do it right in here. And also we got our Nemo file browser. And by the way, you don't have to go looking for this if you need to kill a process. Actually, you can simply bring up your terminal from right down here and you can just use pkill. So for example, if I wanted to close Nemo over here, the file browser, for some reason, let's say it's acting up and it's frozen and I can't get out of it. I can just open this up and I'm just going to enlarge this real quick to make it a little easier to see. All you got to do is do a pkill and we'll say pkill Nemo. And maybe I will shrink that down a little bit so we can see it. <laughs> and then you press enter and Nemo's gone. Just like that. So that's an easy way to kill a process right from the terminal. But since we had Nemo open, uh, this is a really nice looking icon theme. I like this theme here. That's pretty cool. Now, if you want to change any other icons. Hmm, you know what? Nemo probably wouldn't have been a good choice to, to kill for a process. <laughs> because I, uh, yeah, kind of trashed my icons there when I did that. Because that's all kind of part of Nemo's subsystem, so to speak. So that kind of messed up my right click options here. I think I'll just log out real quick and back in. Yeah, wasn't really thinking about that. Okay, I'm back in. So yeah, that was kind of dumb. I powered off by mistake. But since I'm in here on a fresh reboot, I can see up here that our RAM is now at 669. And that's kind of hard to see because it's in white. But if I bring this up, it should be roughly the same. We go to HTOP. So we're at 686 on HTOP here. Not too shabby. And this has a light background. So let's say I wanted to keep that light background. That's kind of hard to read, the conky. Again, in our desktop manager, we can switch that real quick. I go in here. So if we want to change those fonts, all we got to do is go over here to desktop clock, which I think is kind of referring to the conky overall. And then if we select black, now we have it in black here. So that makes it a lot easier to read overall. So that's where you can kind of change your color and then your quotes update too. You can have that update every hour, or every day and so forth. That's where all that is. I think I'm just going to kind of go with white again because I think I'll probably just darken the wallpaper a little bit. Although that wallpaper looks pretty good. And by the way, if you don't want to use variety for your wallpaper, you can simply right click over here. Now we have all our right click settings back and you can select wallpaper right here under desktop background. And by default, I don't think there's really much in there. And then don't forget our right click. We have our right click back. So here we can access all this stuff down here right from our right click menu here. We have desktop manager, our theme manager. All this stuff is right here, easily accessible, display settings and so forth. I like that. That's really nice to have. And then we have our customize, of course. And if we can come over here, we can make our icons horizontal instead. And now they go this way on the desktop. That's kind of cool. And then if you like vertical better, like the traditional style, there you go. And your sorting styles, icon sizes. So you can make them smaller if you want, or you can make them bigger, like massive <laughs> or normal, which is kind of where I like it. And reset grid spacing. Wow. That's kind of cool. So that kind of tightens up your grid spacing. And I kind of like that because I, I noticed before that the icons were spread apart a lot and I thought they were a little bit too far apart. So it looks like that's the place where you can kind of reset that. And I believe the slider is where you would actually kind of adjust your spacing here. So that's pretty cool. Of course, I'd have to have a lot more icons up here to really notice anything. However, if you have a lot of icons, this is going to be a lot more relevant, adjusting your vertical and horizontal grid spacing. And then if you get it just so hosed up, you can never fix it. Just hit reset. <laughs>
and it'll go back to the default. So that's a good thing to know for your icons. And lately, you know, since I since KDE kind of started defaulting their icons to the horizontal, I kind of like that. And so I don't mind having them horizontal like that myself. So the right click menu, that's nice to have. Nice to know that you can get right to it. And then of course, another thing I like are their tutorials. You hit this tutorial button and then there's links here to a lot of tutorials for a lot of basic things, changing your layouts, themes, wallpapers, compiling an ISO, modifying the clock, installing software, moving panels and docks, and updating the system. This is really a nice resource to have. So if you're kind of a starter in Linux and maybe you're coming over from Windows or another OS, this is some nice information that you can kind of refer to and get to know how to tweak and play around better because in Windows, they don't give you that many options. You're, you, what you see is what you get and there's not a whole lot you can do. You can change a few things, uh, but you can't really tailor it to your own look. And in Linux, you can. These tutorials will really help you get started on learning how to play and, and understand kind of what's available to you. So if you're a beginner in the Linux arena, I would recommend looking at those tutorials or even just not familiar with Makulu. You want to understand Makulu better. Those tutorials will do wonders. And they do have a YouTube website, so I believe that's probably where it's linked to. And it looks like my wallpapers are set up to automatically change every X number of minutes, which is okay. I really like that background, actually. <laughs> that works for me. However, if you don't want them to auto change, you can just go in the wallpaper menu here and configure wallpaper options. And all you gotta do is uncheck this little box right here that says change paper wallpaper every, in this case, five minutes. Or if you want it to be a different time frame, you can have that change every 30 minutes or every one minute. <laughs> or change your wallpaper on startup. However, just uncheck this box if you have one favorite wallpaper you want to keep. And then of course, these are all your different sources here where the images are being pulled from. And as you can see, they're coming from Unsplash, Earthview, Desktopper, Chrome OS, and so forth. So a lot of different things here, plus the favorites folder. And what that is, is if we were in here, and you can also set your favorites folder to be where you want it, which is currently in the .config variety favorites. But let's close that for a second. So if we go here and select wallpaper, the images that get pulled, like for example, from Unsplashed and so forth, a lot of these images will update. And so something you really like could potentially disappear in time because new images are coming in all the time. So let's say you had this wallpaper and this was just, you thought was the coolest wallpaper ever. I never want this one to disappear. Well, you can right click on it and then copy to favorites. And then that will put it into your favorites folder. So that'll guarantee that this will always be there. So when other images come and go and update and so forth, you'll still have the favorites plus when we change to different, transform to different desktops, for example, right now we're in the, I think we're in the, in the simple layout. So if we were gonna transform over to say Flash or Unity, a lot of these wallpapers won't be there. There'll be different wallpapers because it's kind of set up to kind of sort the wallpapers according to the desktop. So the theming kind of is more consistent. However, let's say this is your favorite wallpaper of all time, but Eh, you're kind of tired of this desktop, so you want to transform to a new layout. So you, now you want to be in Unity. This, normally this wallpaper would probably be gone. Uh, you wouldn't see it in Unity. So by copying and adding it to the favorites, it'll be there across all the different layouts. So when you transform to a different layout, your favorite wallpaper will still be here in this right hand side pane to choose from. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You want to keep your favorite wallpaper across all the different looks, then just right click over the paper and copy to favorites. This one's already in favorites, so it's not an option anymore. 
<laughs> so yeah, another little handy piece of advice. So I hope this update was a little helpful here. And again, I didn't really feel like I did Makulu justice because of the timing, or maybe I, more accurately, I should say Gnome didn't really do Bakulu justice, especially with that timing on the review. So now all is well in the land. We got the Ubuntu spin available now, which is great. In addition with the Debian testing. So Debian testing, if you want the new latest and greatest and the newest kernel and everything, and the Ubuntu spin here, if you want more stability and something that's just based more on LTS, long-term support. So if you're using this like for grandma or coworkers in a workplace setting, this might be the better option to go with the LTS for more stability and long-term support in its base. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if it wasn't, leave me two thumbs up. Be a double rebel. That'll fix my butt. And hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.